Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Sorry again, I'm late. Uh, my sister came to town. Uh, my mom was visiting her for quite a while, uh, 11 days, I think, up in Hundred Mile. So uh, they just got home late last night, and we had a big visit. So along with my wall of cuteness, one more painting to go. Um, this is my prayer and painting one, so welcome. Oh, here are the kids upstairs. It was so quiet all morning. I mean, I thought they were gone. That's how quiet it was. Anyways, they're back, so it might get loud. I'm sorry. Um, I have decided to paint sheep. I was thinking about camel. Looked too much like a llama. So I'm going with sheep. Only because there's so many references in the Bible to sheep. So we're going to paint this. So it looks like it's on a piece of wood. You can choose um, a teal board if you want, or let me show you natural. So I did this one for another one. So you can have a natural wood look, but I'm going to say I'm going pink today just because everything's kind of cute. Pink, 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 pink. There's nobody here, hon. So I told you. There's nobody here. Say hi. And then you got to go because I'm filming right now. Do you want to say hi? You're not even on the video. Hi. Hi. Okay. Got to go. I'm, I'm going to be here for about a half an hour or so. Okay? Okay. We love you. My great nephew who lives upstairs. Seriously, he's been so quiet. So anyways, I'm going to make it like a weathered barn wood looking thing, but in pink. It looks really good in teal. So if you want to do a teal color, um, you can do that. So that's just... Blue and white till you get a sky blue color. Add just a touch of yellow. And then you're going to go back and forth with yellow, blue, and white until you find the color that you like. Uh, but I'm going to do mine in pink and I'm going to have it sort of worn. So there's going to be some browns and stuff in it. But um, yeah, I thought I would go with sheep because there's just so many references in the Bible to sheep. Like, you are my sheep. Uh, I am your shepherd. Let's see. Um, the one where Jesus goes, well, the parable, not Jesus, but the parable meaning Jesus, where he goes, I'm going to flip this around while I'm talking, well, where one gets away and he always goes, he'll leave the whole flock to find that one sheep, meaning you, because he loves you that much. So that is kind of my theme. I didn't want to do the reference, um, Bible verses, but I'm going to put one on at the end as soon as I find one that I really, really like. Um, yeah, so many, many, many references to sheep, us being the sheep, he being the shepherd, and that's what I'm going for. So I'm just going to pray with you guys real quick, and then we're going to get started. So Father, thank you again for bringing these people to me, for giving me this gift of painting to be able to teach people. And for this tier where I get to share how I feel about you with them. If anybody is going through any kind of COVID crisis emotionally, please, Lord, be with them. And feel free, people, to be able to lean back on your creator. So um, we ask us all in Jesus' name. And let's get painting. So what I'm going to do, first of all, we're going to use a sponge. Today, I put inside of my little divot the red and white because I'm going to make a blobble of pink, a little bit of black, some extra white for the sheep uh, wool. Now, remember when you're making your background, if it's too faint, you're not going to see the white of your sheep wool. And I put a little bit of yellow and brown, probably way too much because I just want to make the, the fence look like it's... Um, it's not a fan, so just maybe like a little painted on a board because I'm going to be drawing lines right through the sheep afterwards. It'd be so weird. Anyways, take your sponge. I just have a sponge from the dollar store. Most of you guys know I do this because it's faster. So I dip it in water. It's sponge on one side, scrubby on the other. Nothing major. Just get that canvas all wet with this. It's the fastest way to do a background than finding. Get this wet so that the next part will spread on really nice. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to make my shade of pink. So a little red. Just a little bit of red. Mix in with the white till you find the shade that you like. I don't want it to be too dark and light because I won't see uh, my sheep's wool. Okay. 
Beware the wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't want it too dark. Don't want it too light. But I want to see it. So it is a medium pink color. I'm making quite a bit here. But I'm going to use quite a bit. I'm not going to wash that off right away because I might have to use it again. All right, take part of your sponge, but one edge up here. I'm going to load that up with pink. I'm just going to rub it across there. I'm going to give this thing a real weathered look. Oh, it sucked it all up. So let's hope I got enough. Otherwise, I'm going to make some more. Ha! Huh, totally not enough. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, well, I'm going to soak this all in. I mean, I really want this to be pink. You can do it with a brush. If you don't have a sponge, it's going to work just fine. I even got my farmer pants on. Because, <laughs> like, I'm going to be out in my trailer. Can you see me here? Suspenders and all. Okay. Because I'm going to be out in my trailer later. Hopefully the rain holds out. I'm going to go out to that little vintage, and I'm going to seal the roof. Pulled all the tar off from the last owner. He uh, just sort of band-aided the problem. A little band-aid on that trailer. We'll just cover it up without really investigating where the leak was coming from and just slap stuff over top of old stuff that was cracking and then you know you miss a piece. All it takes is a pinhole. All it takes is just like a pinhole and you're getting leaks again. So Anyway, phone's ringing in the house. Nobody's here. I'm not going to answer it. Okay, got my shade of pink. Grab my sponge. Load that up. And we start again. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can see my pink now. Perfect. Just going to load that on. Oh, I love it. Cute background. edge at the bottom. I have any more in that little? It's okay if you pick up a little bit of red and you get some red streaks through it. Doesn't matter. Oops. And you can paint this up and down or sideways. Up to you. Whichever way you want to paint your board. I don't think I'm going sideways. Okay, it's all pink. That's exactly what I wanted. Now to get weird. Take another, I'm going to take a little bit of white and brown. I'm going to be using a lot of white in this one. Um, doesn't matter where I put this. I'm just going to throw some brown blobs on here. Maybe a little bit of yellow in some light brown blobs. This is going to look a bit weathered, like all worn out boards. So I'm throwing a little bit of that on there. Take my pink sponge and just sort of blend that in just so it looks like a rough patch. It will make sense later. Try this, Jeff. Just rub it out a little bit. I want it to look all worn out. Mm. Could throw some white on there in different spots not too much though what i'm saying is not too much white because you're going to be having that sheep's wool now, this doesn't look like much does it i know i'm going to take a little bit of black and put it on the edges just so that it looks a little bit worn so you can run your brush down the side like this let it go over the edge Smudge it a bit with your fingers. Tattered. It's going to look a little tattered. Kind of a little tattered in the corners. It's an old board. It's going to be an, an old board that you found and you decided to paint on it. Maybe fire had gotten to it at one point. Messy. Messy. Okay. 
Don't even think. Don't even think. Just mess it up. Scrub with your fingers a little. Make it dirty. Don't want to have it too perfect. Don't want to have that too perfect. You've got some dirt on your hands. Some black from doing your edges. Push that around in the middle. There you go. So you've got a pink board, but it's messed up. Once we've got the sheep on there, um, and then we draw some lines, it's going to look like wood. Trust the process. All right, so this has to be dry or you're going to have pink sheep. So excuse me while I do this part. That should be dry. Get my clipboard so you can see what's going on here. So again, if you want to paint your straight up and down, paint it straight up and down. I'm just going to do two sheep on there, sort of looking over. So I'm going to start off with um, my round brush, and I'm going to go into black, <clears throat> and I'm going to draw their little faces. So it's just rough. I'm going to put one here. Doesn't matter if you mess this up too bad because it's going to be really um, abstracty. So the face is kind of looks like um, Vicks Vapor Rub. Remember those little cough drops? Little rounded candy corn, even. Little candy corn face. That's going to be all painted black. My second one's going to come up here, a little higher, and it's going to be on an angle, a bit more on an angle. So he's kind of cocking his head over a little bit. Maybe if I do it a little bit higher like that, then it changes the angle. So he's looking a little more sideways. All right, so just go ahead, take your medium brush. Mine is now covered in pink, so I'm gonna wash that off a little bit. But it doesn't have to be too bad because we're gonna put other colors in here anyway. Just tap that in. It doesn't even have to be perfectly, you can leave pink showing through, it doesn't matter. Even the sides, I don't even want these sides to be perfect. So if you just chop it in and these are kind of messy, it's going to be a messy painting. I like to paint messy. So don't worry that your sides are all smooth. It's way more charming if it isn't. Charming, that's my word. Okay. So there's one head, one head. Maybe just make that so it's not so much like a triangle. Okay, there we go. All right, clean that off. Uh, should I clean up this one too? Yeah, clean up your round one as well. Let's go with white and hope we can see it. <laughs> Let's hope we can see it in this picture. Uh, if not, I'll do it in a little bit in beige. Oh, let me do it a little bit in beige, okay? doesn't matter because I want to bring some of that in anyway. So a little bit of brown and white, a little bit of brown and white. So we get the shape. So from this one here, I'm going to start here and I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to also make his head bigger. All right. So this one here, 
again, so you leave a little room because we're going to put a little ear there and this one as well. He's going to come down and be real close to this one. But it's going to be even bigger. It's going to be even bigger. And then his back is going to come down from here. And swoop a little bit this way. Doesn't look like much, kind of looks, kind of look like llamas right now. Maybe this one needs to be a little wider. We can adjust this all with paint. Let's make the face a little bit bigger though. Same with you. Your head's going to be higher. Face is going to be wider. Look how messy I'm doing this. Okay, messy. I like it. All right, we're going to get started with the white. Got my medium brush. Going into the white, doesn't matter if there's more colors mixed into it. Just maybe bl let's blow dry the faces a little bit. I just don't want to drag the black into the white just yet. Oh, how do I put my blow dryer way down the ground? So I can get ab exercise. Lesson learned. Keep this a little bit higher. All right, so I got a bunch of white on here. We are gonna just sort of loosely do a little cap, tap uh, over top of the head just a little bit. It's not finished yet. That little that looks crazy. And this one as well. Follow the top of the head here. Might go a little higher, might go not so high. And then in here where we Sort of go around the face a little bit. Let's leave that line dark. Touch the face. And just push it on there. Baby's awake. Just gonna cover that up. Do a smooth finish. Put it on pretty thick, guys, so that we can blend other colors into it later. I'm making it fatter. That and that, that, that and the cat. Carefully, I'm going around the face. And he's going to interfere. He's going to totally interfere with this other one. He's going to get right in there and mess it up. You know where his sides are. Oh, wait again. A lot of white. A lot of white. Some more white. I don't really like to have the pure white on here, but it's just a start. And I didn't want to use the great big brush. And if you wanted to, you could even do this with palette knife. But look how I'm just like slapping these colors on. This color just it's all over. Some of the pink is showing through. So what? Okay, I'm gonna get up on top of here. As soon as I put the ears in, then I'll know better about that. 
and the shape. So now my two sheep have totally blended together because I've lost that. To go back to the little brush and the black, let's get some cute ears on here so you know where they're going to be. So this one, I'm going to have one sticking out this way. Start small. Just kind of little rounded ears. I kind of wanted it to come out. Maybe it's on an angle a little bit. Oh, coming down just a little. And this one's going to just like hang down here. Right here. So we're super wet, so that's going to be gray. And this one, let's bring it here. And the other one too, hanging way down here. All right, you see the little sheepy face? It's all good. Now let's just go back to the white. And I'm going to go right up to that ear. See how messy my sides are now? They're not even perfect. No big deal. These two, so on the top of the ear a little bit. And it's going to come down on the face a bit in the front. Tap it in. Be messy. So it comes down on the face a little bit there. Same with this one. It comes down a little bit in there. Mess that up. We want it to be instead of a round dome. See how kind of flattened out I made it? by stretching it out in the sides. And I want this to come up right to his ear. Yeah, that's it. Okay, mess up some colors. So take a little bit of that light brown mixture that you made. Um, we're going to follow this guy here. push a little bit into here and make it rounded, just little round strokes, almost straight brown on there now. They don't, they're not supposed to be perfect. So there's going to be like a little shadow for sure underneath where his head is. If it gets to be too much, the end here where the the head is too much brown maybe even goes over on top of that one Some brown streaks going that way what will we stick in this other one he can't be perfect let's mess him up Taking a little bit of brown, just throwing it around in here. Some fun. You can even throw some pink in there too, but right in there. Especially right here. So that you can see where one sheep starts and the other one doesn't. So follow that line around where you want it. And I'm going to do a little bit of white back into here. If you don't like your marks, they're too perfect. Throw a bit of white on top. Ooh, better have some brown in his hair. Can't be perfect up there either. But don't blend it in so it's all beige. Just throw a few marks out there and then walk away from it. Step back, take a look. Oh, I'm really liking them. I'm really liking them. Make it as fluffy as you want. Okay, um, going back to this one. Let's see if I can't make that ear blacker. So what happens when it's wet, it just won't go. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white before I blow dry it. I'm just gonna blend some white in the face. Just wiggle some white, sort of 
around in the face just so it kind of looks and it's going to turn gray just so it kind of looks a bit rounded and not so straight on black there's no eyes in here i'm not putting any in some straight white a little bit on his ear but you can see it doesn't really you can't mess this up either by the way so i'm throwing some white on and i'm leaving it on his face messed up on purpose because that makes it kind of abstracty don't get too darn close to the white white over there because then it's just going to blend into it'll blend into his wool but on purpose i'm chopping his face up on the edges so that it looks like i intentionally got messy see with his ears i don't want that to be perfect I want to kind of look like I used a palette knife on it. Uh, where's my palette knife? Do this. If I was to take this knife and start doing this with the black, I'd have all these like weird lines in there. And that's kind of the effect that I'm getting. Let me just see if I, I can't use it with this tray. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do it on this side. I'm going to put some black on my palette knife. I normally I would do that on a flat plate, but I got these like this one here with the divot, so I can't get it in, so I had to paint it on. So if I was going to be doing, see, I would get marks like that. And that's kind of the effect that you can get with your brush. Palette knife, brush, you can get the same effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want anything perfect in this painting. So let's not do that. I don't know why, but people like palette knife paintings uh, in the world of selling paintings when I'm in there. People think you're a better artist if you can work with a palette knife I'm finding. A lot of times I, I put paintings out there and people think I used a palette knife or I did not. Just going to shape his body with whatever little leftover black I got on my brush just so you can kind of see and I'm nothing neat about it now you can see separation between the two cheeks ah oh, they're so cute they're totally cute some black in his hair his hair <laughs> his wool all right clean off the brush I'm going to see if I can make a little bit of pink and throw some pink in there. Just a little bit. I still have some black on my brush. I'm just going to cover the paint. Just so it looks like it's got some reflection off the... There. I love it. I love it. Do you love it? You think the weight should be a little choppier on his head? Uh, I'm going to use a medium brush for that. Because my round brush is too round and I want it kind of square looking. So I'm going to take my flat round medium brush. That's better. It's too perfect. It's too perfect. This is too perfect. It's all about the imperfect. Start small so you don't end up going his whole face, going down his whole face with that. Okay, let me look straight on. I'm going to turn it to see what my angles look like. Okay, so I think maybe this one should come just a little more there, just so he's a little rounder. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I'm going to give it a quick blow dry because after this, I want to draw some lines so it looks like wood. And it needs to be dry, otherwise I'm dragging all that paint through, okay? Sorry.
Okay. So we are going to draw lines. So I'm going to go straight up and down because gravity is a wonderful thing. You can use a ruler if you want. Make sure that's dry before you do it, though. Um, either using your super tiny brush, which doesn't hold a whole lot of with that. It won't hold a whole lot of paint if you use your super tiny brush. Um, you can use your angle brush. If you're going to use your angle brush, you're just going to use that part, that high tip part. So you're going to load it up and you're just going to angle your brush so that you're just touching with this piece and using that end bit as a feather. Or you can use your round brush that you already have. Just whatever you do, don't push hard. When you think you're running out of paint, you're forced to push harder to get the paint out. All that does is flatten those bristles out and you get a fat line. We're going for a thin line here. Um, we can do it in brown or we can do it in black. I choose black. I have to add a little bit of water to mine just to thin it up a little bit. Then I'm rolling my brush. Just going to use the tip and I'm going to run right through here lightly. See how I go over top of my sheet? Find that same line, go through, run it down. It's an old board with this crack in it. Just my feeling. And hopefully this is straight. Really light touch. It can almost disappear. When I turn it over, it kind of looks like a cracked board that we painted on because it's gone through there. Um, you could have done that with brown if you wanted to. I'm just going to do draw a couple of fine cracks through here. So one beside one's maybe a little bit longer. Maybe that comes right from the top. Okay. And then my wool is wet. My wool is still wet. Super light lines. That was pushed a little hard. I'm going to paint. Okay, turn it on. What does that look like? Kind of looks like lines. You think that that's too dark, which I do. I think that could have been done with brown. I'm going to take some white. And I'm just going to go over these lines really carefully across the top of them. For this, you could probably use this little brush. Still, don't push hard. Just going to go across the top with a little bit of white. And that's just going to look like a highlight on the board. Maybe you thought that got too thick. I'm still going to give it a highlight, but you have to be like super careful. that you don't make it disappear. Maybe it should be darker. Darker white in there. Get rid of my paint right on that. Okay, now I'm going to bring this close so you guys can see. Right here, when I did this little white highlight on top, it kind of gives the wood um, some depth so it actually looks like it's cracked. It's got this shadow on top. If it gets to be too much white, just go back in with a little bit of black with your tiny brush, just underneath a little bit, but don't get rid of your white. Okay, so there's no real way to mess this up other than you've made a big thick line. Say you did make a big thick line. Um, let me see. This is my thickest line right here. And when I go in to do my white, what I would do is I would go right on top of some of that thickness rather than above it. I'd go on top of that black. <laughs> it's 
an adjustment upstairs. So that got rid of some of that thickness right here. See, it's too thick there. Could be that your board just swelled, but to get rid of some of that, to keep it all looking like a shadow, just go right on top of that and carry on across. Oops, I did too much. To go back to the black, back to the black, and give it a little bit of black so that it's not too thick. So I'm just going to go across and do that, and that will be the end of my painting. If you feel like it needs a little more at the top, another crack. Um, do another crack across the top, just maybe a little one here, because I think it needs it. I do think it needs it, so I'm going to do that. Turn it around. I'm just going to do a little bit right here on this side. So I put the crying upstairs. That's the three-year-old. There. Now that that looks complete to me. I'm going to make those ones thinner because I think they're too thick. And they don't have to be solid. <clears throat> you can break that up. Like I broke these ones up. They don't have to go all the way across. Maybe there's just a little bit of a continuance over here. But that's it. All right. So that's your painting. Sign it when you're done. On my name. I'm going to go right down here on this top. Oh, maybe I'll go over here in the wall. Over here. So funny. Three-year-old is so jealous sometimes. They're all kind of acting weird because they don't know how to adjust yet. But they will. New babies. Anyways, I love it. This needs a little bit more. I like the shadow here. This one doesn't have enough, so put a little more shadow there. Continue on with your uh, whiteness. Maybe I'll just keep carrying on. Um, a little bit of white brown. I'll carry on. Shadow, just tap it in, tap it out. If it's too dark, go back over it with a little bit of white. Tap it up. There you go. Now he's got kind of a shadow. Kind of a shadow. Love it. Okay, I'm going back with my little brush. Normally I don't look at black on it. Get all the black off. Now I have too much white. So, I guess you should always start from one end, top, bottom. This is going to take me a very long time and you guys already know what to do. So I'm going to let you go. When I finish this off, I'll post the finished picture with this one. So you'll see, but basically that's all it's going to look like. Thank you for showing up for my cute, my cute animal week. Um, and especially for this one, this tier that means so much to me. Um, I will see you next week. I don't know what the theme's going to be. It depends on what I get from the Whatever Wednesday people. And then I just build the whole week around that. So I think it was Rooster. So maybe it's just going to be farm animals next week. I don't know. But thank you for showing up. Please, if you're going to take pictures, uh, tag at home with empty canvas on Facebook. Um, yeah, at home with empty canvas on and Facebook. Or my share my Patreon link and let's get some more people on my group. I could sure use the help in my small business. Um, thank you so much for showing up. Love you. God bless. Bye.